I had this off cut of cedar from another footstool I made recently and it was enough to make the sides of a box. I wanted the box to be about 100mm high so I marked up the board to cut off and use the outer sections that had the tighter grain lines. I ripped the two sections from the board on the table saw and then switched out the blade to this thin curved blade to resaw the boards in half because I wanted to save as much thickness as possible. I like to use the table saw to resaw when I can because it cuts faster and cleaner than the band saw. But this small diameter blade was the only one I had, so I had to finish resawing the boards with the band saw. I then cleaned up the sawn faces using the thicknesser. For the box dimensions I used the golden ratio which is approximately 1.6 because apparently it's more pleasing to the eye. I knew I wanted the larger dimension to be 250mm and the smaller dimension worked out to be 156mm. With that sorted I could then cut the sides to length. The joinery method for this box was going to be box joints, funny enough. I used the Woodfather's box joint jig, which I made for this project, to cut the joints. I chose to use box joints because I've never used them before and was keen to give them a go. Mario's jig worked out great, and I'll leave links to his plans and video down below. As I said, the jig worked great and I was happy with the fit of my first attempt at box joints. So it was time for glue up, which went really well. Once the glue had set in the joints, I flush trimmed the fingers and gave the box a good sanding to smooth everything out. Time to make the lid and base, and I wanted a contrasting timber, so I used mahogany. In the end, the contrast wasn't as much as I hoped for, but I wanted to only use timber offcuts that I had at hand. The base and the lid were going to extend out past the sides of the box a little, so I placed the box in one corner of the board and marked out double the offset I wanted, and then cut the boards to size. The base was going to be set into the box slightly by cutting a rebate around the perimeter, so I marked the inside of the box onto the base and cut the rebate using the table saw. I first made cuts on the face of the board to the depth I wanted.
and then finished off the rebates by cutting the boards on edge. Time for a test fit. Perfect. The thickness of the rebated section of the base will be the only visible part when it's attached to the box. So I cut a chamfer around the edge of the base to half that thickness to make it look symmetrical. That also meant that I needed to plane down the lid to that same dimension so the base and lid would look as though they're the same thickness. I also added the same chamfer to the underside of the lid so the base and the lid will look as though they mirror each other. Here's a post I put up on my Instagram while I was making the box showing how I used a thin strip of sandpaper on a thin board to sand the chamfers without rounding them over. Next job was to install the hinges. I measured in about 45mm and marked a line with my marking knife and then used the hinge itself to mark a second line for the hinge recess. When using the marking knife I made sure to face the bevel of the knife blade to the waist side of the recess to get an accurate line. Then, using a block of wood as a guide, I cut the sides of the recess with a handsaw. And then removed the material with a quarter inch spiral bit in my handheld router. To mount the hinges I used an off cut to line up the edge of the hinge flush with the inside of the box and a self centering bit to mark the screw holes. The brass screws that come with these hinges are soft and the heads tend to snap off if a lot of force is applied to them, so I drilled pilot holes first and use the little beeswax on the threads to make it easy to screw them in. I then did the same for the lid. With the fit of the lid all good, I fitted a couple of small magnets to keep the lid secure.
These little magnets are so strong and quick. I marked the glue side of the second magnet so it got installed in the right polarity. Get that wrong and the lid won't close because the magnets will repel each other. That would be a real d moment. It was finally time to attach the base and I used a very thin bead of glue to try and avoid any squeeze out, particularly on the inside, which would be difficult to clean away. Very happy with that. Time to finish the box and I chose beeswax for the lid because it darkens the wood slightly and I was trying for that contrast between the lid and the box. Sometimes when using wax finishes in cold weather, I like to use the hair dryer to get the finish deeper into the wood. I use traditional wax on the box sides because it dries with a very light neutral finish. I reattached the lid after giving the box a final buff and polish and gave it to my mum for her birthday with a few goodies inside.